Hey, and a very warm welcome to the Into the Light Web podcast with me, your hostess, Joanna Hunter, metaphysical teacher, spiritual life and business coach, published author, and the high priestess of the Light Web, a spiritual technology that will change your life. This is the place to be to talk everything under the Light Web from consciousness, relationships, to money, to spiritual business, and everything in between. Hi, it's Joanna Hunter here for Into the Light Web podcast, and I am so excited to be joined by another guest on my Million Dollar Lab series. Today, I'm John, joined by Tom Smith. Hi, Tom. Come and say hello to everybody and tell people what it is that you do in the world. Thank you so much for letting me come on today. And yes, hi, everybody. Um, yeah, my name's Tom Smith. Um, I am a global entrepreneur. Now, at this stage, I own and a part hotel business all over the UK. We'll have different partners across the globe. Um, I have two construction companies in Ireland and the UK where we build apartments and houses and sell them um, because the, the development market has been incredible through, through COVID. You know, house prices and sales for house prices have been brilliant. So as a developer, we're doing really well. Um, I've also wrote a book called Fearless during the global pandemic. Um, which is an antidote to self-doubt and it's helped thousands of people across the world. So I feel truly blessed. And over the last six months, I started a new business called Dream Mentoring. And I'm now mentoring people all over the globe. So I am obsessed with success. <laughs> I am a dad of two amazing daughters. My wife, Dolores, is my life. And I'm just all in 24-7, you know. I love it. I love it. Has that obsession with success been a lifelong obsession or do we have humble beginnings here? Well, definitely humble beginnings, yeah. You know, I grew up in Northern Ireland in a house full of love in the 1970s during a a civil war where there was huge amounts of conflict, bloodshed, and thousands of people lost their lives. Taking Taking that aside, because our abnormal world became normal to us. Um, yeah. From the age of 10 years old, I worked in a fish and chip shop or a burger joint, as people in America would call it. And as a young man, I realized that money would give me a choice in life. And money, I suppose, was power, and power was money. And I don't mean power in any other way than when I was a young man, it would have allowed me to buy my own tracksuit my own pair of sneakers or football or soccer boots. And sometimes I just would have looked at my money box as a, as a young man and realized I earned that money and it gave me some sort of control because as a family, we were penniless, but my mommy and dad, which I'm very lucky are still alive. Like we just had the most amazing time growing up. My parents are still alive and amazing. And it was always fun, happiness. And we just about make, made ends meet. But that, that was typical of a family in the 1970s in Ireland. Yeah, my best friend's from Northern Ireland. She's in uh, Newton Ards, just outside Belfast. Yeah. So that's, that's where she is. And I remember the first time about 15 years ago, I flew over to go and visit her. And she just so flippantly said, yeah, like that, that house was just bombed last night. And I was like, what? I'm like, is it safe? I'm pan- because here in, in Scotland, we were getting none of this in our news feeds or anything. You know, we were not seeing this. And I think a lot of people do not appreciate what Northern Ireland has been through. And you're right. You know, you, you call it a, a war zone. And it's kind of funny to think that there was like a war zone in a Western country like this, but it really was. And well, yeah, it, you know, growing up, and I've, I've told this story before because it's so factful. Like my mom and dad would have re- looked at the news before we went to school. And it wasn't because they were trying to catch up with the tabloids or catch up with what was going on with world affairs. Mm-hmm. We wanted to find out where somebody had been murdered or where the latest explosion was. So then we could have went to school a different way. So we would have got to school on time. So we, we used to use the news as our sat-nav to find out what way to go 
which was our safest journey, just to go to school or just to go to work. So, you know, Unreal. another time when I was a young contractor, we were working on a, a police station roof, working for the security forces, which was a big thing. You know, huge, a, lot of, a lot of people were murdered for work, working for security forces. And the policeman came running out and said, get off the roof. And we, you know, we're all like, what's wrong? So we all had to come off the roof. And when I asked him, I said to the policeman, like, what was wrong? And he says, we've just had intelligence that you were all about to get shot off the roof by a sniper. So what did we do? We had our lunch. And then we went back onto the roof an hour and a half later and just started working again. Because I wasn't going to let anything hold me back from being an entrepreneur or a young man. But that insane life was just our normal. Yeah. So, you know, it also gave you and still has given me incredible resilience in life that everything is doable, especially if you look at a country like ours, which now is a blueprint for peace. We yeah. are definition as a country of conflict resolution. We have defined it. That's amazing. I love that. Let's talk about your book, Fearless, because I feel like this segues really beautifully into, because obviously this is where you learn to fear less, right? Like literally that story that you just told is wild. And then you are, you know, you, yeah, you're just going to have lunch and you're just getting on with life and literally you're fearing less. Um, so I can imagine a book like that because, you know, I really feel, um, you know, this, this latest kind of time in, in the world has literally been like project fear, you know, it has the, the dial of the fear has been turned up so much, you know, do we, are we doing the right thing for our family? Are we not, you know, all these debates, all of these things, but the fear is the thing that's the real mind killer. You know, I don't think it's this, this virus that's really the, the, the threat to the quality of life is actually the fear more than this virus. I totally believe that fear is what it is. It's false events appear, appear in real. Mm. You know, it is a mindset thing. And I'll, I'll thank you so much. I'm going to get on to my book in a second. But I sometimes can have the most amazing day and go home at night to my beautiful wife and go to bed feeling incredible and wake up the next day and somehow come under attack with dread, fear, and anxiety. And yes, I might be the master of being able to fix this inside my own head, but that is years in the making where I understand it's a choice whether to be afraid or scared. Hmm. Because sometimes it's just complete and utter nonsense going on inside my head. And you need to just say, excuse me, are you paying rent? Because if you're not, these thoughts aren't welcome. Leave my mind right now. And it's that simple of a choice, but that doesn't come overnight. I've trained my brain to get to that point over growing up in Northern Ireland. And that's why during the global pandemic, when everybody was running to the hills and rightly so, I decided to put pen to paper and write an antidote to self-doubt called Fearless. And it has scenarios going through the whole book. It's based on my dream system. So, which, which is my company, my mentor, my hotel business. D for determination. R for regeneration. E for energization. A for ambition. And M for motivation. And all of these factors are explained through the chapters. It's very easy to read. And I just give people real life situations. For example, growing up in Northern Ireland, I have a friend who was involved in the conflict because so many people were and his own arch enemy and him who used to want to kill each other because there was a war are now both community leaders that are helping each other's community every single day and meet and to say that became best friends would probably be a little bit too much but one time I tried to call my friend and couldn't get him on the phone for two weeks now this is mind-blowing so I, on the third week, I got him and I was worried. I asked him, where have you been? And the United Nations had flew him and his so-called enemy from back in the day to Afghanistan to explain what conflict resolution was to the Taliban. 
Now, oh my God. If that is not the blueprint of Northern Ireland overcoming a war and peace becoming number one, love defeats everything. These guys only want what's best for the communities now. They both stood up in front of the Taliban and shook each other's hands. And the war and tribes in Afghanistan that attended the meeting were blown away that these guys were arch rivals and real better enemies at one day. And that's something that really bothers me too with racism and stuff. Like, why do people hate on each other? It blows my mind. So when I wrote my book, Fearless, it was to reach out to the masses. And I wrote that book. If it helped one person, my job was done. And on that basis, I'm really lucky. It's helped thousands of people. And I'm about to sign a new international book deal on it. And because I didn't write that book about me, I just wanted to help one person. And it's it really has worked. Beautiful. I love that. I love that. And you also touched on something that we touch on in the million dollar community, which is the power of one, right? A lot of people, they, they maybe get 10 clients or they get a small number of people and then they're like, oh, it's not enough, right? But it's never going to be enough if one is not enough. Like the one has to be enough. If you get two, two has to be enough. And that's how we build and build and build and even build a business. Like it has to be, if, if one can't be enough, then a hundred will never be enough either. Yeah, It's that thing that we need to build. And, and I love that, you know, that's how I approach my projects and my, like one is enough, one is enough. And it's the power of one. It's such a powerful thing because if you can put something out and, and really be proud and say, if somebody, one person gets something extraordinary out of this, then it's worth it to me to do this. And then that's what really magnetizes the masses. Yeah, and you know something, you know, do you know what I do? And I, I just love the way you said that, the power of one. In my brain, when I, I picture what the one person looks like and I start coming up with the avatar of the guy, of the girl or of the child. And recently I spoke the Polish children who were all in care homes in Poland, the Polish government asked me to speak to them. And when I was speaking to tens of thousands of children on radio, I only spoke to the one child. And I pictured, nearly making me cry, I pictured <laughs> that child who was broken, who thought, I have no chance. And I just tried to portray to those, in, those kids that I was just a kid in Northern Ireland that grew up in a civil war that had zero money and had hardly any choices in life. And we went through 40 years of bloodshed and I still made it. You know, I might be driving Lamborghinis and flying in jets, but I made this happen from zero. And if I can do it, you can do it. And I purposely didn't speak to the Polish government. I wanted to speak to the heart of those kids. So in my head, I play the image and the avatar of the person I'm speaking to. And I see what they look like. I see how they're feeling, what way they're breathing. And I really want to reach out to that person. I also use the avatar when I'm speaking to the one. When I'm writing a goal, like a new staff member for my team, I'll write down the description of the person. Because goals aren't all butterflies and money and sensation. Yeah. I use my goal writing to fix challenges. So if I need a person to work for me, I'll write down the person, picture what they look like, and write when I want them to start working for me. And then the avatar and the universe will just connect me and I'll find those people. But I always write the job description looking for the one. Yes, that is brilliant. I love that because I, I mean, I've been self-employed in 23 years. I've had brick and mortar businesses. I've got my online coaching business now, but staff was a problem for me and I realized what I always used to do wrong especially when I had I don't have staff problems in this business because I, I know what to do now but back in the day what what I used to do was I used to think oh I need to hire somebody new and then I would make this laundry list of what I didn't want <laughs> right but that's where my focus was going what and I didn't want gonna, guess guess how that. many times what I didn't want showed up right again and again I had some great people don't get me wrong but then I had some like really really like crazy crazy stories that I can tell you about staff but 
it wasn't until I did exactly what you were doing the process of like, what, what would support me? What would support me in this role? What would I like? How would this work? And all this. And then I began to really bring in like some really quality people. I mean, like I love on my team so much. And actually, funnily enough, at the beginning of the year, I took my whole team out to Northern Ireland. Wow. And we had a bit of a weekend over there, which was amazing. And we installed the Giants Causeway. We did a bunch of touristy stuff. And then we had like some really good fun. And, you know, but I, I'm so appreciative of these people because I've managed to literally magnetized to myself like absolute rock stars but it's because I've done just done that process that you said like really focusing on what is it that I want as opposed to what it is that I doesn't want and it doesn't have to work just with staff it can work with anything if you're trying to get a house anything and anything, anything. Can, can I tell you something and you know this only happened last week so in my goals I wrote a goal last week that I was going to sell our house within 24 hours to somebody with no mortgage and cleared funds mm -hmm. and I sold our house yeah. and four, 14 hours later we sold our house oh my god on my mommy's life it blew my mind I just went check this out I was so excited <laughs> but I also just remembered how quickly if you are 100 million percent all in and you've got complete belief you can do this for everything and anything in life and you know a story that I really love, like my wife is my world. She is my world. And we both met and Dolores, before she went on this trip to Paris, she moved space in her wardrobe and took clothes out and stuff. So there was a vacuum in her wardrobe, a space that the space needed filled with somebody else's clothes to walk into her life. She pictured what the person would look like, dark hair, tan skin, Guess who's talking here, yeah? So <laughs> then I went to an airport with my little girl. Two, two children started playing, my wife's daughter and my daughter. I looked at a girl in the airport and went, started talking to her, going, oh my goodness, this woman's amazing. And i like, this isn't normal. I called my best friend from the airport and said, listen, please don't laugh. I think I fell in love with a girl in the airport. And he went, yeah. <laughs> And I'd been through a bad divorce and things. And he just went like, look, you know, you're tender hooks. You're, you're crazy. I walked onto the plane to go to Disneyland and she was on the same plane. I walked the whole way down the plane and asked her out on the plane in front of everybody. And I got a yes. And since then, and I said in my wedding speech, thank God for Mickey Mouse. Because, you know, amazing things happen every what day. An amazing story. But we love a story like that. If you believe, you're going to receive. And what people forget is life and the universe is just like going to McDonald's. Hi, if you put an order in McDonald's for a Big Mac, you're going to get a Big Mac. It comes in seconds. It's the same with the universe. If you put an order in and you unequivocally believe you're going to get it, it comes. If you don't trust the process and you have got self-doubt, that burger's never going to come to you or it's going to be so slow. But if you trust the process, unequivocally, the universe will deliver stuff to you at super speed because you believe and then you always do receive. The only thing holding people back is themselves and they don't get it. No, and, and you know, it's really funny you're talking about the universe is like McDonald's because in my book, the, my million dollar experiment book, there is please trust the universe like you trust the pizza man. You order like, the pizza. Oh. Yeah. Right. You order the pizza, you know, the pizza is coming. You, you, you're not, you might even get your plates. I get ready for the pizza coming, you know, right. You might even get, you know, your napkins, whatever I kitchen roll out, whatever. Right. But never do you feel the need to go down to the pizza shop, go check if mm. they're actually making the order, you know, it's like, it's like, please trust the universe. Like you trust the pizza guy. Yeah. And it's so true. It's just like McDonald's. Like, it's like you place order. But one of the things that, I really wanted to touch on here because I think this is really important to the conversation yes. is yeah. the universe loves certainty, right? Because if you stand oh, at the counter of McDonald's and you go, I want to, um, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I don't, mm, I, mm. the universe loves detail. Exactly. And, and that's the people that people need to re refine. I would like to be rich, but rich to somebody might be, been able to spend a whole weekend with their children. They're a single person that may be making two million pounds in a year. 
But then as you write your goal, you have to start writing more details on who you're going to interact with, who, who you're going to link up with, how you're going to make the million yeah. pound. So a goal, a goal for me when I write it out is never one sentence. It's usually a half a page. So the universe can then connect all the dots and then make it happen. Beautiful. It's all about that. the detail and goal writing. And some people may just write down, I want to make 1.2 million. Full stop. It's done. Thank you. That's not how it works. The detail has to be in it. I also sign my goals. It's done. So my declaration of the universe, it's already happened. I sign it, Tom Smith, and I put a date on it. Because if I don't put a date on it, it's manana, manana word. And tomorrow never okay. comes. But if I put a date on it, it happens every single time. Amazing. I love that. I love that. And it is that piece of certainty. Because, I mean, just like ordering food, if you stood there like I'm in an oil and maybe I want that, I don't know. You know, you're not going to get served until until they know exactly what that order is so they can I put it in the kitchen. I couldn't agree with you more. Because until you make the decision, how can it be delivered to you? Yes, exactly. Exactly. And do you know, I love this story about your wife as well, right? Because the signs then that she was kind of working the woo-woo as well, right? Like she was working the, the law of attraction she, too. She's the one that taught me. She's the clever <laughs> one. I'm just a guy, I'm just a guy that turns up. She is the real clever one, you know. And oh amazing. I'm very, I'm very proud to say, and this isn't me trying to like belittle or any guys that work for me, but my whole team. Most of my team is real superior ninja superpower women, including my mom, who helped, who was the definition of fearless, my wife, my two daughters, Farah and Rihanna, Jackie, my chief operating officer, officer Heather, Shannon, you know, all my team are all incredible. I'm blessed with amazing strong women in my life. But Dolores was the one that taught me. My wife, Dolores, actually bought me the book this Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Oh my God, I love that book. I love that book. And 13 years ago, when I was in a dark place, I learned the powers of the universe and I've never looked back. I feel I actually feel truly blessed that I can write my entire life out and watch it unfold in front of me. It's as if by magic, it just keeps happening. You know, like, wow. You know, that's how I felt when I, I learned the secret. And, and for me, it was like, I don't know if you experienced this as well, but for me, it was like something awakened inside of me that I, it was like, I, I read it and it was like, I know this, but I didn't know it. I know this, but I don't know it. And yet at the same time, it was like something just woke up inside me. And I was like, this is it. This is what, what I've been you, looking for. What you for. said there was so correct and so right. I think I know this, but I don't know it. And then that what all of us have been in some situation in our lives where we've been unconscious competence and we've been, these amazing things have happened. Yes. But we don't realize it's when through a process of us thinking about it, believing it, then it coming. But we've also yes. visualized it and then it turns up. There's always been a system to it, but we didn't realize when we were younger or sometimes older until we wake up. And then once you know the system, it never changes. It will always work. It's always it's worked for millions of years. It will continue to work for millions of years. It's amazing. I love it. I love it. And I love how you've used this to literally build your business, to build your wealth, to build a, a business that is also sounds like it's really imparting this knowledge on other people and things. Tell us a little bit about how it all began building your empire, because obviously you've been in construction and it sounds like that was maybe one of your first businesses. Yeah, you know, I was a young contractor in Northern Ireland um, and I did really well here. Um, but I definitely am the definition of dreaming big. So I had an opportunity through a friend and I went and lived in Dubai for a few years. And this is like 14 years ago. And we were buying and selling uh, parcels of land and making a lot of money. Now, when I'm talking Dubai, I'm not talking the Dubai that you see now on Instagram. There was the Burj, and I'm talking Burj the Hotel, okay. not the Burj Khalifa. And in the marina, there was only seven towers. In the marina now, there's maybe 700 towers. Right, but okay. we went and earned our stripes over there, and you know we made a lot of money. When I came back to Ireland, nobody knew me anymore, because that's the way it goes. So... I said to my wife, I'm going to open an apart hotel business. And she said, why? And I went, well, I've been living in one for three years. 
this is the way forward. The world isn't going to know what hit it. I've got this idea. <laughs> so for 12 months, I walked the streets of the UK and Belfast looking for opportunities. And I was told no. Now, my wife actually said to me one day, when are you going to give up? And I laughed and went, give up? Really? <laughs> and as if by magic, an amazing company from America called Marathon from New York, a hedge fund from New York, bought a huge building in Belfast. Nobody had lived in the building because everybody had defaulted and they couldn't afford the mortgage when the credit crunch hit in 2007. Right, okay. The yeah. highest building in Ireland was partially occupied. And 24 hours later after Marathon Bannett, I'd done a deal on 50 apartments. And my resilience of growing up in Northern Ireland stood, me, stood by me very well. And from taking 12 months of no, I got my first yes. And then from then, my apart hotel business has grown at an exponential rate. We actually opened 220 extra apartments during the global pandemic. We expanded the whole way through COVID. And Amazing. everybody was running to the hills, like I said before, we faced adversity head on and we won. I knew COVID was going to be temporary. And Dream Apartments was born and now it's expanded the whole way through. So winners win, I always say. And it's, I think it's so true. <laughs> It is so true, isn't it? And it's that mindset, it's that winner mindset. And uh, one of the, I love the quote by uh, Jordan Michael that said, or Michael Jordan, he said, um, I've never lost a game. I've only ever run out of time. And that to me is like the epitome yeah. of a winner's mindset, you know? And it was like, you, you're like, when are you going to give this up? And you're like, N until it's done that's when but not until it's done you know it's like we have to hold that that faith even when everybody else thinks that we're crazy right like because it, it's all an inside game you know giving up is the easiest thing in the world to do you know i genuinely haven't got an idea on how to give up you know if i'm in if i'm in the ring in mma i'm never gonna tap out i'll pass out first because <laughs> but life is the same Life is a fight every day. It might not be physical, but we need to be prepared to step up and fight. To fight self-doubt, to fight anxiety, adversity, to not let a global pandemic beat us, to have our mindset on point that we need to win. You know, it's every, success is a daily thing. It's a journey for the rest of our lives. It's not a trip that you can go and come back from. It's 24-7. You know, and yes. people don't get that. That don't get it. And that's okay. But it's what I want. You know, it's just, it's in it to win it mentality. I, I love that. I love that. But I think it is. And it is that daily, it is a daily choice. And I think what happens with a lot of people is they, when they discover that it's a daily choice, their fear kicks in and their fear says to them, well, gee, that sounds like a lot of work. But the thing is, it's, like I have found the journey of success that I have been on has been one of the most interesting, fascinating, um, motivating. It has been such an incredible journey and it's been such a joyful journey as well. It doesn't have to be this like you got to grind it out type thing. You know, it's this journey can also be joyful. And I certainly feel like I just can't believe what you said because it's it's so true. And what people don't get is they've got all these big end goals. Mm -hmm. But what they really need to do is see the struggle and the challenges and the daily journey. That's the bit to celebrate. Celebrate the journey the whole way through because what happens is when you actually get that big goal, a lot of the time you get that fallacy and you're like, where is it? And you're like, what? Where is that amazing feeling? And it doesn't come. So it's yeah. enjoying the journey. The goals are formality. You're going to get it. I love that. And do you know, the, the funny thing is that we set these goals, right? And then it is the journey that we should be celebrating and, and working celebration and things like that. Because while we're on the journey, a lot of people, when they reach their goal, they can feel this like energy that I call like, what, what, what? You know, like, it's like kind of like pulling down, right? Yeah. And the reason is that they've done it, right? And the, the thing that we were really desiring in the 
in the the idea of the goal was actually the journey. That's actually yeah. the bit that's quite fun, you know, that's to do. That's where the buzz is. The buzz is that's the where journey. the buzz is, exactly. That's where the buzz is in the journey. And, you know, the time for when you've completed a journey, that's the time, that's not actually the time for celebration. That's the time for gratitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the time for gratitude. The celebration time is in every increment that happens to achieve yourself to the goal. Once you're at the goal, that's your time for gratitude. And I think a lot of people think I'll celebrate once I get there. Well, you just yeah, missed the opportunity for day. celebration. Be grateful every day. Yes. Yes. And you that's a key. Bit, you know the bit that I, I don't know, it feels normal to me, but it's having food in my fridge. It's having a roof above my head. It's been able to kiss my kids in the cheek when they're sleeping. It's about having, you know, a mom and dad who are incredible and are still alive, you know. And recently it's really flipped itself on me, like in a massive way. My, my best friend died about 11 weeks ago. Oh my goodness. And he will never see his kids again. He will never see his wife again. And see the wake up call that that's given me. See the, see the nonsense that goes on inside our heads and the worry over nonsense when it really, you should just be loving people or see the challenge that you've got. How lucky are you to have that challenge that you're actually alive? Say yes. thank you when your feet touch the ground because there's also millions of people across this world right now that don't have a laptop, that don't have electricity, that don't have running water. Did you have a hot shower this morning? You're already light years above millions of people across this world so yeah. stop being grateful and stop complaining you know i can't i can't listen to it anymore i just can't listen to negativity i'm just like it's that's not for me good luck bye you know i think i think when you start to go on this journey your tolerance for bs literally no starts comment. to like diminish very no rapidly <laughs> very very rapidly and you start to see life through a very very different lens you start to see life through a a very more a much more empowered lens but a, a very different lens and then you start to realize like how much of what once occupied your mind is kind of not that important and you start to realize that there is things that are really important in life and the connections and the love and the these are the things that actually make life worth living yeah. and yet you know and is and I find exactly the same you know like I, 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 had, to I had to catch myself on two weeks ago so my Lamborghini was in Edinburgh and Lamborghini Edinburgh and I said to the guy you know you haven't fixed this right you know this hasn't happened and I just want to come off the phone I went how lucky am I that I've got a Lamborghini? You know, and the story isn't about me and my car. Story is sometimes you're complaining about something and you really need to take a step back and go, wow, look at my life. My kids are healthy. I've got a job. You know, we don't have credit card debt. You know, we're still alive. COVID didn't beat us. And I caught myself on going, hey, man, wake up. You know, we're complaining over a Lambo here. Wake up. Um, and I actually felt a bit like a diva for five minutes and then I had to calm down. But <laughs> there is so much to be grateful for. So exactly. much. So and much. A lot, to be a, lot of it's, for. a lot of it's just right in front of you. And you don't see some people don't see it. One of my biggest wake up calls was in a law of attraction seminar with a woman called Babel Moore, who Noel Edmonds credits with his massive comeback, you know, when he got two. TV hit shows after Blobby Gate. Yeah. And, um, and you know, and she, rem I remember asking this question and I cannot for the life of me remember what I asked this woman, but I can remember her answer with such crystal clear clarity. And she said to me, and this was such a, cause I wasn't, we, I was by no means at that point ha earning the money that I'm earning now or anything like that. But she turned around and she said to me, do you want to, what makes you think that you would be happier with more if you can't be grateful for what you have now? Wow. And that was a massive paradigm shift. And, you know, we don't have to wait till we have the Lamborghini and we, we have that telephone call, right? To, because what yeah. makes you think that you're going to be happier with more? If you can't even find the happiness in your current situation, you are alive right now. Yeah, I, I feel personally, you know, wealth is amazing. 
But money and wealth is an amazing byproduct that just keeps coming when you're enjoying your life. Yes. You know? And it yes. comes in tsunamis and you're like, oh my God, thank you so much. And thank you so <laughs> much. And, but it's also a lovely feeling to give it away too. And I genuinely love giving money away to charity and stuff. Yeah. Um, because I also, it bothers me when I see other people who are big earners and they don't give anything back. And sometimes it doesn't need to be money. It can be your time to help other people. Yes. So people get caught up in themselves when they should really be. Giving back is incredible. And then if you if you give back correctly, because it comes from your heart, my goodness, God and the universe will pay you back a million times over. You know, yes. but then there's also a flip side of that. Somebody recently said to me, you must really enjoy doing the charity thing. And I'm like, why? And he says, because when you're giving something away, Obviously, you're going to get it back. That's why you do it. I'm like, man, have you lost the plot? I give it away because I've got pain in my heart knowing somebody else is suffering and I want to help. I don't give it. They want to have yin and yang. So then it comes back. So, you know, people... Can, people I feel people, like you've read my book because I'm telling you, I have an example like that just in my book because, you know... We believe with the law of attraction, like energy attracts like energy, but it doesn't because it's not in the way, it's not your deeds that are attracted back and do a good deed, good stuff comes back. No, if you do a good deed and your heart is like, what am I going to get? Oh, Black, get nothing, forget, nothing, forget. <laughs> a hard time. That's what you're going to get. Yeah. But if yeah. you're doing that thing from that place of genuineness, I genuinely feel a pain in my heart. I want to help these people. I want to do something. I'm full in. I'm all in chips on the table. Like this is something I feel passionate about helping with. Then your heart was in the right place. And that's what's returned to you. Yeah. I, well, we had a moment and I think people need to remember sometimes giving and loving people, you know, and I can't, sometimes it's not your family who you're loving. You're loving humanity. Yeah. I walked down to reception in one of our buildings that will have 50 apartments in Ireland and there was three women crying at reception. And I'm like, what's happening here? And I had said, ladies, can you please tell me what's wrong? And they went, we are frontline COVID nurses. We have had to leave our family for 12 weeks. We have came to check into your building and we can't afford it. And we don't know where we're going to go yet. So we don't know where we're going to go next. And I went, you're frontline COVID nurses and you're crying in my building, really? And how much can you afford? And, this, and I said, listen, this is the way this is going to roll. My company's struggling too. You will not be paying a single penny. Stay with me. And the three nurses cried their eyes out. And we really helped them out. And then the relationship we got through COVID, we were sending pizza deliveries to all the hospitals. And <laughs> it's not a cliche, but we were sending donut deliveries to the police stations because they were our frontline workers. And we done it because we wanted to reach out to say thank you. And sometimes it's an, we didn't ask for one thing back. In fact, I asked the nurses, please do not put this on social media because I wanted nothing back to, apart from helping those people out. And mm -hmm. it was the most nicest feeling in the world. And then my business partner actually called me, the guy who's died, Gary, who I love with my heart. And he says, man, what have you just done? And I'm like, how do you know? He says, our whole office is talking about it. And he says, one of the nurse's husbands worked for me. And everybody in the office is all, oh, my God, did you hear what Tom done? And I just showed you, you know, the best press you can ever get is free when somebody genuinely, organically finds out that all I want to do is help It's you. that ripple effect, isn't it? And it's a, the other day we were, at, uh, the other day I was scrolling Facebook and I seen a guy that I follow on Facebook and he talked, he said, he said, when I sometimes go at the Starbucks drive through I just ask to pay for the cars behind me. Wow, love it. So I was like, oh my God, I love that. Like, oh my God, how would that feel? You know, like it's like I was tuning into the energy and I was like, how would that feel to be like your love coffee's it. paid for? You know, yeah. I'm like, oh my God. So I was in the car with my husband and I'm telling him the story and we're actually on our way to Starbucks. So my husband says, should we just do it? I said, yeah, let's That's just nice. do it. Yeah. You know, and um and so we paid for, there was only one car behind us, which was a little bit disappointing because we wanted more yeah. people. But <laughs> we were like, let's just go with it. So we, we said to the, the guy at the, the counter, he said, can we pay for the car behind us? So the guy goes, 
mm, oh okay right like that's so like like that and he puts it through and and so we pulled we you know we got our coffees we pulled out and then we sort of turned the corner and we could see the ladies and we could see their faces were like priceless like this you know and, and then you know and then this yeah. big smile and yeah. I was what just about, like, what oh about the God, lady, what about the people crazy. behind you who are maybe having challenging times and that cup of coffee is like a million it quid meant them. anything wow and i really truly believe that these random acts of kindness have such a powerful powerful ripple effect in the world you know because it, it, it even reminds that feel people good there's factor still that goodness you have, that feel good factor like you can't buy that in a jar no or, you know so no, it's, it's win-win it's complete win-win it is so win-win and we I mean we left that Starbucks feeling like a dog with two tails we felt so good about ourselves <laughs> you know and that's it and that's what's beautiful is that and you know and this is just one of the the I think for me personally one of the perks of wealth is not all the stuff that I can buy all the things that I can have it's the things that I can do for others of course you know, and being able you know, to help in Belfast I donate money to the food bank every month have done the whole way through COVID a considerable amount and I would never ask for any press in any of the newspapers nobody knows to do it apart from us talking now and I don't want anything out. Bag now. <laughs> yeah but you know the thing is see when you find out how much families are struggling through COVID and children aren't able to eat because the schools aren't giving them free meals because they're not allowed to go to school and when you hear the heartache of a family that can't afford to put electricity if you have access funds or a bit of money to give, and the church has actually asked me, would you like to come and see what your money's done so far? And I, I haven't been yet, but I can't wait to see how I've helped. Because um, mm -hmm. helping other people in life, really, is that not what life should really all be about? That we actually yeah. help other people Absolutely. around us? I love it. I love it. Yeah, and do you know, one of the things like small uh, random acts of kindness, everybody is capable of that, whether it's just helping someone across the road. Mm. I even say that a random act of kindness is smiling at a stranger, right? A little bit harder yep. to do now that we're all wearing masks, but yeah. we can still do that. And you never know, it might be the only smile they got that day, you know, and it still has that ripple effect of really changing and turning the gears of the world making it a better place so i love i love the way that this conversation has gone because i do i, I have it. one that you that you'll really like you know now that i know your, your personality and i call it sprinkling gold dust okay and I, and I, do it, I do it all the time going through your reports in fact i sort of do it purposely now to see somebody's reaction so i've went through and i'm about to put my shoes on because i'm through security and i'll look for somebody and i'll say and I'll know what, what their badge looks like. And I'll say, are you in, in charge of security in the airport? Yes. Why? What's wrong? No, no. I just wanted to say you, from that guy at the start of the queue in security until that girl, your staff were absolutely incredible. I just wanted to say a massive thank you. Thank you so much. And it's called sprinkling gold dust. And they're like, really? And you went, absolutely. I always come through this airport and it's always fantastic. Thank you very much. And then you're putting your clothes on, your boots, and mm -hmm. you're, you're packing your briefcase. And then you look at every staff member being told by their boss and their faces just burst with sunshine. And they're like, the wave over at you. And the other week, we had ordered a cake for my office when, when my company was four years old. And I called the lady and said, hi, is that Sharon? And she says, yeah. And I says, you've made a cake for our office. And she went into defense mode. Why? What's wrong? Mm -hmm. And I says, let me tell you. I adore cake and that's one of the best cakes I've ever had. Thank you so much. And the woman was in pieces. Really? Oh my God, you've made my day. What did it cost? Nothing. Nothing. Sprinkle Nothing. gold it's dust so on amazing. people. Sprinkle gold dust and make them feel amazing. Why not? Do it. Yes. Yes. I love that. I love that. One of my favorites, little random acts of kindness is to put the money for the car park in like a mall and the money for a car park in the little thing because don't oh, you love yes. finding money yeah. <laughs> yeah. right don't you like do you not feel like the jammiest person in the world when you find that money and you're like you realize like it's enough for the car park 
I love things like that. So I, I sometimes will just leave the the money in, in the, in the bottom there for someone else to find. And I think, oh my God, like somebody's just going to have their day made when they see that. Yes. And it's fun. It's really fun. And it's nice to know that you're pouring in. I talk about the collective pot of human consciousness and we're all pouring into this collective pot of your human consciousness. And we can choose what we can pour in. We can pour in our sadness, our misery, our frustration, our anger, but we can also pour in our love, our hope, our joy. And every day we show up to the pot and every day we pour into the pot, right? And I decided that I have this other saying, which is you're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And okay. I decided I wanted to be part of the solution and so I imagine this pot and I imagine every day, did I pour something good into that pot? That's my question for myself. Did I pour something good into the collective pot of humanity today? And if I say yes, then I can rest easy that day and know that I did a good job. And, you know, that is how I see the thing, because I think there's so much of pouring the negativity and we can all complain, we can all do these things, right? And, and that's not to invalidate anybody's complaints or anything, but we also have the option to pour goodness in that pot. Big time. And it's all a choice and it's a healthy choice. One of the big things for myself, like I am going on to six years now from, I don't, I do not watch the news at all. Me neither. I haven't for the last 15 years. I remember one time going on to my mobile phone and when I went through like 13 different stories, it was murder, bloodshed, death. And I'm like, I don't want to be part of this anymore. And the biggest changer through COVID for me also, it was all inspirational stuff for our customers and our staff. And we practiced the government guidelines. But I believe fear was driven by the news. Absolutely, you know, 100%. It's a business. It's a business. And it's a business. If, exactly. you're not, if you're not buying into that nonsense, well, then it can't come out of you. Your children and like my wife and me, we made COVID and the time off for my wife and kids, we made it fun. I I went to work every day, but we made them feel safe. We had movies at the, at home, and all our conversations were always positive. And what are we gonna world holiday? Will we go on when this is over? It wasn't doom and gloom, as if COVID's gonna come and get us. And believe me, of course it was scary circumstances, but we made a, a decision not to let our children be affected by, it. you know. So. I love I just, that. And I think it is, it is what you're, you know, are you buying what the press is selling, right? Because at the end of the day, the press yeah, is no, selling yeah. something, right? And are you going to choose to buy what they're selling? Because that is your choice. And I made a 15 years ago when I first came into like the knowledge of the law of attraction and things and began teaching it. I, at that stage began to like, basically look and be like, are you, you know are you going to buy what other people sell and one of the first things I did wasn't actually newspapers the first thing I did was I got rid of the the women's magazines right right? because these celebrity women I was looking at them thinking these women are gorgeous right but they were never right they were either too fat or too thin too tall or too short to this or to that and I thought what am I doing giving my attention to this? I was actually shocked when you said they were never right because I thought a woman was always right because my wife's always right. <laughs> Plug your ears. We're yeah. always right. Yeah, yeah. But no, but it is, this is the, this is the thing. And, and you know, when you're in, in that and you're thinking, you know, like, and you're reading that and like, what's that doing to your own conversation that you're having with yourself? If you're looking at these women who look beautiful and, and, you know, but they are being so judged and so picked apart. Yeah. You know, I, you I look at yourself pressure, and think, well, pressure, what plans do I have? You know, I sure puts people on there nowadays, you know, like I'm, I'm proud to say I'm 47 years old and I grew up in an era where conversation is everything, you know, mingling with people is still what should be done. And the, the peer pressure on children now, if they don't get enough likes on Insta or Facebook and stuff is absurd. I'm shocking. Uh, and it's the same with these magazines. So I can see why you broke away from it because like, yeah, I, I wanted just away from that. And I wanted, yeah. I wanted to give my attention to things that celebrated other people. Then came the news, the news and newspapers that was next. Cause yeah. I just realized they never reported any, like there's a lot of positive things that happen. And 
they never report it really like very very rarely do did you, you, did you ever see a story the whole way through covid exciting news this is only temporary we have got this don't worry no 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 <laughs> I, well, thank God I didn't watch any news during COVID, but you know that. You, know you know what I mean? Those stories. Aren't exactly. Like there's not. There's never any. You never leave the news wanting to fist pump in the air oh, and be yeah. like, "Whoa, yeah. this! I feel so good. I'm so glad I live on this planet." We never. You never leave the news like that. You're just like, we are so screwed beyond screwed beyond screwed. Yeah. Right. Like that's how we feel, and it, it, that's not true either. Because there's a lot of good people in the world, and that's not true either. And I remember once I ordered something. It was I can't remember what I ordered, but I remember getting a newspaper with it, and I was like, "What? A yeah. newspaper?" And I looked down and I started reading it, and the title of the newspaper was Positive News. I was like, "What? The whole newspaper had nothing but positive news stories in it." Nice. I mean, I made myself a cup of tea. I put my feet up. I had the best time ever reading that paper because. There was just nothing but positive news. And it was, it, there were some really interesting stories. It was stories from all over the world. Wow. It was reported like the news. I was like, my God, if this was worth, if this came in my local news agent, I would, would buy this. It. it would sell I it. would buy this every week without fail. Like I would buy this, a paper like this every day. And it was just so enjoyable. Like I read that thing cover to cover. And I think I even might have read it twice because I just really enjoyed the stories they were great and I found out some like really cool projects in this world that were happening right now as I was reading that and I was thinking wow and yeah. I it was that initial reaction when I saw it I was like what I don't even allow these things in my house and then I realized it was all yep. positive and it was really cool but um this conversation, Tom, has been amazing. We're coming up for time here. So oh, my tell people where they can find you on the interwebs. We're going to link all your links below in the show notes and everything. So if somebody wants to come and find you, how can they find you? Thank you for asking that. So I am Tom Smith, the entrepreneur on Instagram, and it's Smith with an S-M-Y-T-H. I am Tom Smith Dream Apartments on LinkedIn. I am the author of Fearless, which is available on Amazon. Um, and I sort of am dominating social media at the minute. I'm feeling very grateful. And you ain't seen nothing yet. My dream mentoring course is going from strength to strength. I'm going to America in a couple of weeks to start shooting the online courses. And um, there's a lot more to come. Amazing. So Thank you so much, Tom. I really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity.